Big Bad Toy Store has your Ash vs. Evil Dead stuff, so check out the link in the description down below. Oh, hey there, screwheads. It's Steven here with a review of the Ashy Slashy Puppet from NECA. Yeah, so NECA finally made something all nice and fabric-y and warm. We can stick our hands into and move our fingers around and get something nice and fun to play with. But it's about, like, 60 bucks, right? And... It's ashy slashy, so is it going to be worth the price of admission or not? And it's a puppet, so 60 bucks, is it worth it? Well, let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. To kick off the review, I'm going to do something that I don't normally do, and we're going to take a look at the box. The reason why we're going to take a look at the box is I feel that there are going to be quite a few people who are going to keep ashy slashy in the box, actually for mint and sealed box purposes, for long-term collection purposes, and maybe someone just wants to see where the best spot would be to get this signed by somebody who's maybe worked in the special effects department, if you're maybe going to Cinema Wasteland. Name drop there, kids. Anyway, on the front of the box, we just have a nice promotional picture of Ashy Slashy with his mouth nice and wide open, and on the back of the box, we just have more pictures of the prototype where it's at different angles, so nothing too, too different from that. And on the sides of the box, it's going to be the same on both sides, but I took pictures of both sides just so this way you could see it if you would like. Stills from Season 2 where Ashy Slashy makes his first initial appearance. So you can get that reminder if you need it for some reason, because Ashy Slashy is definitely something that is memorable from the Evil Dead franchise. The top and the bottom of the box is just continuation of promotional materials, where on the bottom of the box we're actually going to see the credits for everyone who was able to make this puppet happen. So if you want to give them a shout out on Twitter or Instagram or whatever, you can hunt them down and you can give them a thank you if you'd like. All right, now we're going to take a look at Ashy Slashy proper, and we're going to take a 360 spin view to kick things off. So in general, Ashy Slashy does look very nice. There are a couple of quality control issues I'll address as we take a closer look throughout, but generally speaking, I think NECA did a really solid job with this guy. In the show, we really don't get a very, very, very clear look at Ashy Slashy. I mean, yes, he was on screen for quite a bit of time, but it was mostly under shadow or in not the best lighting, so we weren't able to really see the quality of the stitching, we weren't able to see the colors of the buttons, and obviously NECA probably had a chance to actually take a look at the actual puppet that was used for the show, so that's a little bit different, and we do have to give them the benefit of the doubt that they were able to make it as accurate as possible. But that aside, NECA absolutely did the best job that they could to recreate what we've seen on the TV screen. And for that, it doesn't look like there are any inaccuracies at all. So enough of a 360 spin, let's take a closer look at the quality of this guy, which overall is very nice. So taking a look at Ashy Slashy's head first, because an interesting thing, when he doesn't have a hand shoved up inside of him, his mouth is naturally wide open. His eyes are actually a silver color, and when the light hits it just right, he does look very lively, or when it's not hitting it right at all, he does kind of look dead inside, like a deadite. So that is definitely fitting for the character. The buttons are actually sewn into leather. It's more like a bolstery, so they do have a little extra security to that, so this way they're not just going to pop off. And it does add to the overall aesthetic of Ashy Slashy. So that is nice to see there. We do have the eyebrows which are secured in with a different kind of felt. And they're really held in well. I don't think these are going to pop off over time. It does look like it's going to have to be something you're going to want to remove by pulling it if you did. So that's fine there. No issues of security for that. Now when we take a look at the hair, the main black stripe that's running through Ashy Slashy's head... No variation in coloration there, it's just going to be straightforward black hair. However, he does have two gray stripes on the side of his head, and this is where we do have some nice texture to the hair overall in terms of how it looks. So we do have some straightforward gray hair, but every so often we do have a couple of strands of white hair with black tips. So we do have a little bit of pepper sprinkled in throughout, if you understand what I'm saying. So, it does look like it has some dimension to it, and it does look like NECA put in some real care to the hair. The only issue that I would have to have here would be that on the sideburns, it kind of looks like they just put in the full length hair and then chopped it off, so this way we could get the sideburns, because you can see that there are still some full length 
hair coming out of it. Yeah, so I don't know what the issue was there. Of course, if you wanted to, you could take some scissors and you can chop it off if you wanted, but it would definitely be a personal preference for that. Another thing that's not too big of an issue, I think it's just from the manufacturing process, there was a random blue piece of thread that's sticking out of Ashy Slashy's head. Don't know how that got there, but if it is, it's something that I think could have been cleaned up, but regardless, it is still popping out of his head, and I don't think that should have been. As we move down to Ashy Slashy's main body, where we do have his shirt or his jacket, whatever you would like to call it, the stitching is nice. It's a little ragged, which actually does add to the overall feel of Ashy Slashy, but one of the things that I really do like would be the buttons. Instead of just being a straightforward black or a darker blue, they do have a spray to the buttons, so this way they actually look textured and not just bland. So that was a fantastic addition to that. Again, like I had mentioned, there is some fraying to the jacket, which would be intentional. So just be careful in some spots, like let's say around the pockets or around where the collar would be. So this way, over time, that doesn't come unraveled, and that would unfortunately maybe take one of the seams with it. As we take a look at the arms, actually connected rather well. The stitching is nice and tight there, so nothing to worry about in terms of popping off. And getting connected onto the hands... That's actually not really the case there. If you really wanted to, you could kind of pull up his sleeves to reveal the arms just a little bit, but you're just going to reveal more of that standard material that was made for Ashy Slashy's, well, skin for the left hand. And for the right hand, with the chainsaw, it's actually attached in with another piece of that upholstery or the leather there. Looking at the chainsaw in and of itself, though, it has some pretty nice detailing with some sophisticated felt work and some stitching work as well. We do actually have a few random blue threads that are left over from the stitching process. Not necessarily entirely accurate to the source material on that. I tried to pull some of them off and it did look like they were still stuck in the seam, which I'm a little worried about, but at the end of the day, it still looks nice there. One thing that I am worried about is that the black felt, you can actually see through it if you were to hold light up to it, so I'm worried about the longevity of that. But I think it will still hold up in the long run with the proper care. Last up, as we move down, Ashy Slashy does have a little bit of an elastic belt to him, so that is a nice touch for the realism. And then for his pants, or where you would stick your hand up inside, we do have a brown piece of fabric, which is meant to represent his pants. And at the bottom, we do have a little bit of fraying, which again is mostly going to be intentional, it looks like, from some of the other in-hand pictures of Ashy Slashy. They all have that. So... For longevity of Ashy Slashy, just make sure you are taking good care of him. So all in all, the detailing is very nice, but I do think that there are going to be just a couple of areas where I think if you don't really take care of Ashy Slashy, there could be some issues in the long run to keep him in the best condition possible, which for anything of this matter, you really should take care of your stuff. So how exactly does Ashy Slashy move? Well, when you pull him out of the box, he's actually going to have a cardboard tube stuck up inside of him. And it actually goes pretty far up in him. So what you're going to first have to do is just pull that out. And then once you pull that out, you can actually stick your hand up inside. Ashy Slashy up by his mouth is going to have two elastic loops at the top part of his mouth. Slide your fingers in there, and then you can have this guy keep talking and never shut up. Now, aside from that, he actually does have a couple of points of articulation. He does have some wire frames in the arm. It feels like a couple of ball joints on both the left and the right arms. So you can definitely move the arms around and get some very limited posing. Basically, you can raise his arms up, down, forward, and back, and around a little bit. So not too much, but he does have some movement. Now, you're probably wondering exactly how big Ashy Slashy is. Well, to be honest with you... When he's in a neutral pose, meaning your hand and not up inside of him, he is a bit taller than your standard 12-inch ruler, and for how wide he is, he's going to be right around that mark when he has his arms spread out wide. So, he's going to command a little bit of shelf space. Now, I know some of you are probably collecting some of NECA's Ash vs. Evil Dead stuff, or even the Army of Darkness stuff, or e Evil Dead stuff in general. So, here's a size comparison with the Ultimate Ash from Ash vs. Evil Dead, and the SH Figure Arts Awakening Goku, if you just so happen to collect some import stuff, like I know some of you guys do. So, this way you can get a general size idea for how big Ashy Slashy is gonna be. 
So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. In general, I think NECA did a really solid job with Ashy Slashy. The only issue that I might have with this guy is the longevity. Some of the frayed spots for artistic reasons do have me a little worried, but it's not necessarily for the people who know how to take care of their stuff. I do feel like there are going to be a couple of folks out there who don't necessarily treat this to the best that they should, and unfortunately over time, I think that that may result in degrading of Ashy Slashy and a couple of parts popping off and whatnot. But if you do take care of Ashy Slashy and you keep them in the best climate controlled environment possible out of reach of things that may catch and tear and this, that, and the other on Ashy Slashy, I think this is going to be a fantastic prop replica for anyone who is a fan of the Evil Dead franchise. And it is definitely going to be worth the money in years to come because the first production run of this guy, it looks like already sold out and it's already going for more. So if you like Evil Dead and you like torturing some of the folks around you and you like playing a whole bunch of games, which I'm thinking about doing a whole bunch of short skits with this guy, I definitely recommend Ashy Slashy to any Evil Dead fan. Well, folks, that's the end of this review. Thanks for watching, and be sure to follow me on social media to catch more behind-the-scenes shenanigans and updates. The end card should be popping up now with more hand-selected STR goodness for you to watch, so check out some of those videos. Be sure to check the description too to see where you can buy this figure or others like it and some cool links like the credits for this video and other ways you can help out the channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch ya in the next video.